Hello everyone. Welcome to this session of in-depth economics. We cannot imagine our world without the existence of money. In the last tutorial we have learned why do we need money? Money is anything which is generally accepted as a medium of exchange, a store of value, a measure of value, and a means for the standard of default payment. Money is the most liquid asset of all. You can watch the previous tutorial by clicking the link you can see on the screen now. Today we are looking at a different concept but equally important. Money supply and its components. Please watch the tutorial till the very end. And if you find the video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more of such content. Before we begin, let us look at some key terms that we will come across in today's tutorial. First, Central Bank. A central bank is a public institution that is responsible for implementing monetary policy, managing the currency of the country and controlling money supply. Reserve Bank of India is the central bank of India. A commercial bank is a financial institution that accepts deposits from the public, gives loan for the purpose of consumption and investment to make a profit. State Bank of India Bank of India and ICICI Bank are some of the examples of commercial banks. Paper Currency and Coins Paper currency and coins are the basic form of currency. In a modern economy, money consists mainly of paper currency and coins issued by the monetary authority of the country. In India, currency notes are issued by the Reserve Bank of India. However, coins are issued by the Government of India. The next concept is demand deposits. A demand deposit account is a bank account from which deposited fund can be withdrawn at any time without advance notice. Deposits in such account are considered as money since checks drawn on this account are used to settle transactions. They are payable by the bank on demand from the account holder. Time deposit of fixed deposits. Time deposits have a fixed period to maturity. Time deposit account locks the money of the investor at the bank for a certain period of time. During this time, money will earn a fixed interest rate that is much higher than a typical saving account. The next concept is Post Office Savings Account. The Post Office Savings Account is a deposit scheme provided by the Post Office. The account provides a fixed interest rate on the account balance. What is Money Supply? The total money held by the public of a country at a specific point of time is known as money supply. Money supply includes the total money both in the form of cash as well as demand deposits available with the banks that can be used as cash easily. Money supply is a stock concept. It means that money supply is concerned with a particular point of time. The money supply of a country has a major impact on its economy. Any change in the supply of money will result in a consequent change in the market. A rise in the money supply will result in decreased interest rate and prices of goods and services, whereas a decrease in money supply will result in increased interest rates and prices of goods and services. So, money supply is a crucial economic indicator as it affects inflation, interest rate, and overall economic activity. It is important to remember that the money supply does not include the stock of money held by the government or the money under the possession of the banks. This institution serves as the suppliers of money, and the stock of money held by them are not considered as a part of the money supply. Now, let us look at the components of money supply. Money supply is typically categorized into different components based on their liquidity and accessibility. M1 represents the most liquid form. M2 includes near money like small time deposits. M3 and M4 include broader measures and less liquid components of money supply. M1 and M2 are known as narrow money. M3 and M4 are known as broad money. These measures are in decreasing order of liquidity. M1 is the most liquid and the easiest for transaction, whereas M4 is least liquid of all. 
Now let us go into the details of each of these components using some infographics. The first component of the money supply is M1, which is also known as transaction money. Because the components of this measure can be directly used to make transactions. The first component of transaction money includes coins and paper notes held by the public of a country. The second component of M1 includes demand deposits of the public with the commercial banks. The last component of M1 includes the deposits held by the central bank of the country on behalf of foreign government and banks, international monetary fund, world bank, public financial institutions etc. The second measure of the money supply is M2 and is a broader concept as compared to M1. It includes M1 and saving deposits with the Post Office Savings Bank. Post Office Savings Bank do not provide the facility of withdrawal through checks. Therefore, it cannot be included in demand deposits with the bank, resulting in the evolution of M2. The third measure of money supply is M3 and is a broader concept as compared to M1. It includes M1 and net time deposits with banks. Time deposits are those deposits that has a date of maturity. Money in time deposits must be held for the fixed term to receive the interest in full. The last measure of the money supply is M4 and is a broader concept as compared to M1 and M3. It includes M3 and the total deposits with Post Office Savings Bank but does not include National Savings Certificate which is a fixed income investment scheme that can be opened with any post office branch. Now let us convert this infographics into equation form. M1 is equal to C plus DD plus OD, where C refers to the currency held by the public in terms of coins and paper notes. DD refers to demand deposits of the public with the commercial banks and OD includes other deposits with public financial institutions, foreign central banks and international financial institutions. M2 includes the whole of M1 plus deposits with the post office saving bank account. M3 includes the whole of M1 plus net time deposits with the commercial banks. M4 includes the whole of M3 plus total deposits with post office other than in the form of national savings certificate. You can take screenshots of the infographics I have prepared for future reference and quick revision. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again, take care and happy learning.